Ibu yang terhormat peserta webinar Metek. Saya akan membawakan dalam dua bahasa, bahasa Inggris dan bahasa Indonesia, sehingga nanti mudah dimengerti. Saya akan membacakan susunan rangkaian acara pada, hari, pada sore hari ini. Yang pertama adalah nanti opening speech dari Ketua Umum Perhimpunan Rumah Sakit Seluruh Indonesia, Bapak Dr. Kuncoro Adi Purjanto Mkes. Dilanjutkan opening speech by Mr. Thomas Graf. He is Deputy Head of Mission Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany, Jakarta. Uh, Mr. Graf, hello. Uh, maybe Mr. Graf yeah. is not hello. Yet. Hello. Oh. Okay, Mr. Graf, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, Probably you don't see me under my name because something went wrong with the links, it seems. And okay. I'm not really sure whether you can see me because I'm getting the response that I cannot start my video because it has been stopped by the host of this meeting. Oh, okay. So right now, so, our call is uh, Mr. Graf. So we, we're going to make you the co-host so you can uh, open the video. Thank you. Okay. So, so after that, setelah Mr. Graf uh, akan dilanjutkan dengan open keynote speech oleh Dr. Gigi Susistiawati uh, Mars, Presiden uh, RC. Kemudian akan dilanjutkan oleh uh, Pak Jonathan Lu. Beliau akan menjadi moderator kita pada sore hari ini. Pak Jonathan nanti akan uh, melit setelah itu dengan pembicara-pembicara berikutnya. Dan selanjutnya kita akan memasuki uh, Tanya jawab atau discussion. Baik, uh, untuk selanjutnya, for the next, kita akan mendengarkan Ketua Umum Perhimpunan Rumah Sakit Seluruh Indonesia, Bapak Kuncoro Adi Purjanto. Uh, kepada Bapak Kuncoro Adi Purjanto, kami persilakan. Terima kasih, Dr. Grace, yang luar biasa. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semuanya. Yang terhormat, yang luar biasa, Mr. Graf, uh, representative of the American Embassy, yang luar biasa. Para narasumber juga dari ini nih, terselenggaraan ini. Juga ketua ini, ketua umum RC yang luar biasa, Bu Susi, yang baru fresh. <laughs> luar dari rumah sakit yang luar biasa, masih mencoba untuk memberikan yang terbaik untuk kita semuanya. Terima kasih, Simon, Gregor, Brown, dan sebagainya. Tentu mudah-mudahan pelaksanaan acara hari ini bisa terlaksana dengan baik. Bapak sekalian, sebelumnya marilah kita mensyukuri nikmat Allah yang diberikan pada kita, nikmat sehat, sempat, dan insya Allah setiap langkah-langkah kita selalu dapat ridha Allah. Bapak sekalian, tentu rumah sakit di Indonesia sama dengan rumah sakit-rumah sakit yang lainnya. Sebetulnya pada praktisnya bahwa kita mengalami dua gelombang besar. Gelombang 4.0, 4.0, Kemudian yang kedua apa namanya COVID, search kapasitinya luar biasa. Kedua hal tersebut tentu akan merubah perilaku semuanya, perilaku apa namanya pemerintah, perilaku masyarakatnya, juga perilaku rumah sakit, termasuk semua yang ada di dalam rumah sakit itu semuanya, termasuk semua sumber daya harus menyesuaikan itu semuanya. Di era sekarang adalah suatu keniscayaan kalau kita harus berbasis digital. Semuanya, semuanya. Kalau enggak tertinggal, ya. kalau pesawat itu akan terbang, dia tertinggal di lapangan, Bapak-Ibu sekalian. Di mana dalam hal ini rumah sakit sudah saatnya dan memulai. Setelah tiga fase, ya sekarang kita masuk fase ketiga, ketika dua gelombang itu masuk ke dunia di Indonesia, maka fase absorb, kemudian adopt, kemudian sekarang adalah transformasi. Jadi di era sekarang itu memang harus bertransformasi. Ya. Paling tidak, Bapak-Ibu sekalian, ada uh, uh, satu pepatah yang kita sebutkan sebagai be smart. Be smart itu tentu rumah sakit harus selalu be better, selalu berbuat yang terbaik, tapi terbaik yang seperti apa. Ketika itu tidak 
terjadi ketika itu tidak terjadi seperti perubahan lingkungan yang ada saat ini, tentu tetap saja akan tertinggal dan lama-lama layu. Ya, layu. Yang kedua, be different. Nah, di be different ini tentu selalu untuk berbuat berbeda. Salah satunya melakukan inovasi-inovasi. Inovasi. Ya, inovasi-inovasi terhadap peningkatan kinerja pelayanan, kinerja keuangan, dan kinerja manfaatnya. Kemudian yang ketiga adalah billing and mean. Ya, billing and mean. Ya, kemudian yang keempat tentu disrupsi. Disruption. Jadi artinya rumah sakit harus menyesuaikan hal tersebut, mengupayakan memberikan. Di era seperti ini pun harus melakukan sesuatu perubahan-perubahan transformatif ke arah yang lebih baik lagi. Saya percaya dengan bantuan dari uh, mana ya ini dari perusahaan-perusahaan yang bergabung saat ini uh, tentu akan memberikan pencerahan-pencerahan ya satu pencerahan satu membuka pintu ya pintu bahwa dunia kita itu sudah tidak seperti dahulu lagi dan semuanya itu memungkinkan mudah-mudahan uh, bapak ibu sekalian terutama ini dari Simon kemudian Drager dan Brown juga hmm. yang lainnya Tolong ini satu permulaan dan tentu kami Persi bersama Arsi nanti tunggu Bu, Bu Susi akan menyampaikan sendiri suatu hal yang permulaan untuk seterusnya seterusnya karena rasanya kita tidak bisa sendiri tidak bisa sendiri kita harus selalu bersama-sama untuk menjadi lebih baik lagi demikian saja pengantar dari saya dengan ini saya nyatakan bahwa Pertemuan hari ini, webinar pada waktu hari ini, yang tentu saja melibatkan orang banyak. Terima kasih pada partisipan yang hadir juga, yang saya kira tidak salah kalau hadir di pertemuan pada sore hari ini. Maka pertemuan ini saya nyatakan dibuka. Terima kasih, kurang lebihnya mohon maaf. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Baik, terima kasih uh, Pak Kuncoro atas pembukaan webinar pada sore hari ini. Kami akan melanjutkan kepada uh, Mr. Graf. So, opening speech after this with Mr. Thomas Graf. Mr. Kurt Thomas Graf is Deputy Head of Mission, Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany, Jakarta. Uh, Mr. Thomas Graf, the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope everybody can hear me. Yes, it's clear. Yes, okay. wonderful. So first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to, to speak to you this afternoon. Um, it is a great honor for me. Um, first of all, I would like to say that um, the current times of the pandemic show it to all of us how important it is to have a good healthcare system and also advanced uh, medical technologies. Never in the last decades has our health system been as challenged as it is today. And that is true not only in Germany, it is true for all countries of the world. Since spring 2020, we've been faced with a health challenged challenge nobody has known so far a challenge which was spreading all over the planet at a quick, uh, at, a, at a speed, unprecedented and threatening to overwhelm the capacities of hospitals, of health systems in many countries. German engineers and German technology have responded to this threat and to this uh, challenge. Not only has our health industry or pharmaceutical industry been able to develop a, an effective vaccine, and not only one, I should add, it has also been able to vastly increase the number of intensive care units and ventilators. And also new approaches such as digital health systems have been tested and will be expanded and used in practice in the years to come. By this, we've managed to deal with an unprecedented situation. Our hospitals have managed the inflow of new cases. They've been able to provide care for all patients and our health system has been starting to roll out 
the new vaccine a couple of weeks ago. And the same is true for Indonesia when it comes to, to the vaccine vaccination campaign. All this has been made possible by an industry that focuses on quality, reliability, and scientific progress. And some of these companies from Germany will present themselves here in this forum um, today. Just to name a few of them, Siemens Healthineers is part of one of the oldest industrial conglomerates in Germany and part of a strong tradition of engineering. Today, it is the sixth biggest producer of medical technology in the world. Drega, which was founded in 19, uh, 1889, has been an innovator ever since and is still also important, a family business today. B. Brown is even older, founded in 1839 and also a family run business to this day. They all are part of the strong industrial tradition of Germany, which stands for constant innovation and being at the forefront of scientific research and engineering skills. And let me add that we as the embassy and also the German Chamber of Commerce here in Jakarta, Econit, stand ready to support companies in looking for partners in Indonesia. We believe there is a lot of potential in health cooperation between Germany and the Republic of Indonesia. And closer cooperation also means increasing scientific exchange between our countries. Because, also, because as we know, and we have a long tradition in German Indonesian traditions on that, knowledge is one of the few things that grow and become more when they are, when they are being shared. And that does not only include an exchange on the latest medical research, but also on practical issues such as hospital management or patient care, especially on the latter, let, uh, on the latter patient care. Germany can learn a lot from Indonesia, but also in the development of, for instance, antibiotics from traditional healing plants. Indonesia is in the process of opening up its healthcare industry. The omnibus bill has named this sector as an investment priority. And Germany and German companies stand ready to realize opportunities that are available for both sides. In order for all this to happen, the German and Indonesian governments are also ready to finalize a joint declaration on health cooperation. The German government supports cooperation in the health sector not, sector, not only politically, but also by providing financial guarantees. As in other sectors, we facilitate business by taking away some of the risk involved. And we will hear more about that later from the LBBW representative here. Let me finish by wishing you a fruitful discussion this afternoon and let me renew my reassurance that the embassy will assist any cooperation between our two countries in, in the health industry. Thank you very much. And again, I wish you good and fruitful discuss discussions this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graf. And we hope that you are staying because we're going to take picture together after uh, the session. Okay, we are going to uh, the next session. The next session will be opening speech from Dr. Susi. Dr. Susi is the president of Indonesian Private Hospital Association. Uh, Dr. Susi Setiawati, the floor is yours. Okay, sudah kelihatan? Uh, sudah, dokter. Yang terhormat, uh, Ketua Umum Persi, Dr. Kuncoro. Uh, yang terhormat, Mr. Graf, uh, seluruh pembicara dan peserta webinar mungkin kami dari asosiasi rumah sakit swasta ingin menyampaikan sedikit kondisi di pandemi dan bagaimana ke depan untuk post pandemi ini di Indonesia mungkin oke okay. Uh, mungkin uh, kita ketahui pandemi ini uh, kami dari rumah sakit swasta sangat-sangat uh, berpengaruh ya. Jadi uh, mungkin tidak hanya di Indonesia, saya rasa uh, di seluruh dunia pelayanan kesehatan, ekonomi dan sosial ini sangat-sangat berdampak. Ya, uh, terima kasih kepada uh, pemerintah yang sudah uh, membuat 
program pemulihan ekonomi nasional. Ini juga dampaknya kami diberikan insentif pajak, namun insentif pajak untuk alat-alat dan obat-obat terkait COVID-19 itu hanya sampai Desember. Ya, jadi kita juga sudah menyampaikan pada waktu pertemuan bulan November apakah akan diperpanjang tentunya kita belum tahu kapan ini pandemi ini selesai ya jadi harapan kita dengan adanya vaksin ya jadi mungkin tidak hanya di Indonesia di seluruh dunia mungkin vaksin ini menjadi suatu harapan bagi kita ya sehingga herd immunity dari masyarakat di Indonesia tercapai ya asal dilaksanakan secara cepat kemudian distribusinya lancar dan baik uh, saya rasa uh, herd immunity untuk masyarakat Indonesia tercapai ya mungkin saya tidak cerita uh, tentunya di masa pandemi tahun 2020 sangat-sangat berat bagi rumah sakit swasta baik rawat jalan maupun rawat inap uh, rawat inap turun drastis namun kalau kita lihat teman-teman di lapangan juga survive ya bagaimana dengan survive tentunya banyak sekali tata kelola uh, di rumah sakit yang perlu kita perbaiki dan kita improve ya jadi inovasi-inovasi pelayanan juga Uh, saya lihat teman-teman di lapangan itu uh, uh, banyak sekali ya. Jadi dengan telemedicine dan lain-lain itu dilaksanakan oleh teman-teman. Kalau kita lihat mungkin kita harus positif thinking ya. Jadi GDP projection ini 2020 ini G, G20 ya. Jadi negara uh, G20 uh, itu Indonesia uh, prediksi 2020 itu minus uh, 2,4 ya. Jadi termasuk bagus juga ya dibandingkan negara-negara lain uh, masuk yang G20 ya. Yang yang positif hanya uh, China ya. Kemudian kita lihat projection di 2021 2022 ya jadi ada pertumbuhan jadi kita harus positif thinking bahwa pertumbuhan ekonomi akan semakin membaik uh, di uh, Indonesia uh, post pandemik uh, tentunya ya pemulihan pelayanan kesehatan uh, kita belajar dari tahun 2020 bagaimana rumah sakit-rumah sakit di Indonesia mengatasi COVID-19 ini. Tentunya kita harus menguatkan tata kelola rumah sakit dan standarisasi pelayanan. Sekarang rumah sakit-rumah sakit ngedesain ya pelayanannya kembali ya supaya aman pasien pengunjung dan nakes ya kita juga ngedesain fasilitas ya tentunya kalau bapak ibu uh, sekarang ke rumah sakit sudah kita zoning sudah berbeda tentunya ya pasien covid dan uh, non covid ya jadi ini uh, merubah uh, mindset uh, kita sebagai uh, pengelola rumah sakit ya kemudian juga rasio tempat tidur karena WHO mengatakan bahwa COVID-19 akan ada terus ya walaupun mungkin menurun tetapi ada tentunya ini yang harus di apa ditata oleh rumah sakit rumah sakit kemudian penguatan sumber daya dan sistem rumah sakit ya ketersediaan peralatan medis, APD, obat dan logistik ini juga harus dikelola tentunya dengan ada pelayanan COVID-19 ke depan ya walaupun mungkin nanti angkanya akan menurun tetap uh, tata kelola ini harus kita perbaiki kemudian kebutuhan kualifikasi SDM rekrutmen nakes terutama ICU mungkin ini harus menjadi pemikiran semua uh, rumah sakit rumah sakit kemudian uh, ini mungkin yang berhubungan dengan ini pengembangan pelayanan penunjang memang mungkin pada tahun 2020 rumah sakit rumah sakit tidak melakukan investasi yang besar-besaran ya jadi semua fokus kepada COVID-19 jadi mungkin hanya ventilator ya ini drager kan ada ya ventilator ya ventilator ya untuk ICU dan lain-lain ya PCR ya jadi itu yang teman-teman dikembangkan di tahun 2020 kemarin tetapi ke depan mungkin menjadi pemikiran kita bersama bahwa ini juga bisa dikembangkan oleh rumah sakit rumah sakit sebagai peluang untuk menambah pelayanan. Kemudian tentunya pengendalian infeksi di rumah sakit juga harus ditingkatkan. Nah, pengembangan dan pemanfaatan 
teknologi uh, informasi ya di rumah sakit ya IT ini penting sekali tadi Pak Kuncoro sudah menyampaikan ya dengan uh, kita pandemi ya kita sebenarnya sangat efisien dengan kita tidak melakukan uh, rapat ya secara offline atau melakukan mungkin perjalanan dinas dan lain-lain ini sangat banyak sekali uh, bisa di apa ditekan dengan pemanfaatan teknologi informasi jadi video con dan lain-lain sangat efektif sekali ya jadi bisa di mana saja kita melakukan pertemuan dan lain-lain mungkin ini bisa menurunkan biaya-biaya yang dikurangkan oleh rumah sakit tentunya dengan post pandemi kami mengharapkan ya pandemi ini segera turun ya kinerja rumah sakit akan perbaikan terus terang di 2020 Uh, mungkin di kuartal uh, keempat ya itu sudah mengalami kenaikan untuk rawat inap non covid ya mungkin rawat jalan non covid sudah naik jadi mungkin masyarakat juga uh, sudah uh, mau tidak mau mungkin berobat ke rumah sakit ya kami mengharapkan kinerja rumah sakit terus uh, meningkat uh, tentunya uh, ini juga berdampak kepada keuangan rumah sakit akan mengalami perbaikan ya di sini juga uh, kami mengharapkan rumah sakit rumah sakit juga uh, mengatur uh, uh, karena kami sekarang uh, mungkin ada yang provider BPJS ada juga yang merawat COVID nah ini klaim uh, administrasi klaim harus baik sehingga cash flow rumah sakit uh, tidak akan uh, terganggu ya jadi uh, mengharapkan uh, pasca pandemi keuangan rumah sakit juga mengalami perbaikan tentunya rumah sakit dapat berkembang dan menambah pelayanannya tentunya bisa uh, investasi mengganti alat dan lain-lain ya diharapkan di tahun 2021 dan ke depan rumah sakit tetap uh, bisa berkembang dan berinvestasi mungkin uh, pertemuan ini menjadi uh, uh, apa ya uh, ada uh, usulan platform ya dari Simon, uh, Bibron dan Dreger bagaimana investasi untuk rumah sakit. Mungkin itu saja uh, dari kami kami sampaikan mudah-mudahan pertemuan ini bermanfaat bagi kita semua. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Baik, uh, terima kasih Dokter Susi. Saya juga akan menyapa Bapak Ilham Habibi. Terima kasih sudah hadir pada acara versi Medtech sore hari ini. Baik, sebelum kita memulai acara, before we start the discussion panel, I would like to ask all the panelists to open the camera so we can take virtual picture together. Okay. I will count to three and then we all smile to the camera. Okay, one, two, three. Oh wait, uh, the cement is not ready yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, Pak Kuncoro, apakah boleh dibuka kameranya? Oh, karena mungkin Pak Kuncoro tadi izin. Oke, okay, baik. Baik, uh, kita akan menghitung. We will count to three, uh, and then we will smile to the camera. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, once more with the thumbs up. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Okay, thank you. We will uh, start the discussion panel. So we, I will, before I hand it to Jonathan, I will present to uh, our moderator, Jonathan Lu from Siemens, Caldineers. Indonesia, Mr. Jonathan is Head of Marketing Sales, Operation and Communication, Simon Health Nurse Indonesia, and is based in Jakarta. I hand the session to you, Mr. Jonathan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Grace. Uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to say a very good afternoon to all of the audience and participants. Uh, on today's webinar, and I want to specially acknowledge Dr. Kunchoro, President of PERC, Mr. Thomas Graf, Deputy Head of Mission at the German Embassy uh, in Indonesia, Jakarta, as well as Dr. Susi, President of RC. Thank you very much for all of your support and for gracing our webinar today and um, opening up with the welcome speeches and the keynote addresses. Thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak. Um, I will now share my presentation with 
everyone. I hope you can see it. Can you see my presentation? Yes, Mr. Jonathan, you can continue. Thank you very much, Dr. Grace. So um, as we have all heard from um, our speakers on how the world has looked like right now, and I would like to take a few moments to reflect with everyone on the webinar today to look at the impact of the pandemic in a little bit more detail and also share with everyone a unique and innovative solution on how we can enable healthcare providers, hospital operators, hospital owners for a post-pandemic world. There are great opportunities out there and we would like to take this time this afternoon to share with you how this could look like. So looking at the agenda, what Dr. Grace had showed before, we are right now at item number four and we would in the next 30 minutes or so look into uh, also item number five and six together with me. I have other speakers as well and I will introduce them along the way as we go on with this session. Before that, um, I would like to do a pulse check with everyone online who are with us this afternoon on this webinar. Um, I have two questions and I would be very interested to find out from you what is happening in your hospitals or in your labs, in your operations. So if you can join me on menti.com, open up your browser on your phone or your mobile device or on your computer, your laptop, go to your browser, look for search for menti.com in the address bar or type in menti.com in your address bar, you will be prompted a quote and the code will ask, uh, please key in 452240. And I would like to ask this question to all of you, menti.com, 452240. Yeah. I would like to ask the audience here, were plans, were your plans for upgrading or expanding your hospital or hospitals, right? Some of uh, the participants here are running chain hospitals. Some of you are focusing on single hospitals. So how many of you or your plans were actually affected by the pandemic, be it expansion plans, uh, building a new hospital or raising, building a new building within your hospital ground, or perhaps investing in new medtech technology or products or solutions. How many of you were affected? I see now we have 19 participants uh, or 20 now who said that their plans were affected. So far, zero of you said that your plans were not affected. Again, menti.com, menti.com code 452240. menti.com 452240. Uh, there are about 100 of us here, 100 participants, more than 100 participants. Many of you are from uh, the hospital, so it would be great to get a little bit more feedback to understand a bit better if the pandemic had impacted your plans for upgrading and expanding. So 25 of you, thank you very much. So I guess more or less uh, those who have responded, 27 of you, 100% who responded had, is now saying that your plans were affected by the pandemic one way or another. Yeah, and, and this is very, I mean, this is quite obvious Yeah, uh, in the market what we see. And in the next couple of slides, like I mentioned in the next 30 minutes, we would like to share with you uh, what is the innovative solution that we are presenting to help you relook yeah, and restart your upgrading and pen, uh, your, your upgrading or your expansion plans for your hospital or your chains or your lab or your clinics. Yeah, thank you very much uh, to the audience, the 29th of you who have responded. I would like to just finish off this little pulse check or survey with the second and the last question. On your same screen, you don't have to go uh, to, to the website again, on your same screen on menti.com, once you have key in the code, the second question should now come on your screen. How important is the role 
of high quality med tech health or high quality med tech or healthcare equipment how important is that role when it comes to achieving top patient care and safety how important is the role of high quality med tech and healthcare equipment when it comes to achieving top patient care and safety is it not important at all is it somewhat important maybe important or is it very important i see a lot of uh, crowds gathering on the very important part okay some of you think is somewhat important <laughs> many of you are thinking that it's very important so thank you very much uh, for the for the answers yeah very interesting oh and someone said it's not important at all that is very interesting <laughs> so i guess we can conclude that medtech and health care equipment when it comes to quality that is very essential and very critical in achieving in achieving top patient care and safety as we can see now uh, from your responses here a lot of you are saying that it's very important um and thank you again thank you very much for all of your responses now uh, as i promised that was the last question that i have wanted to ask all of you in the audience and today now that we have confirmed that a lot of your plans were impacted by the pandemic and the fact that top quality med tech and healthcare equipment is important to top quality patient care we want to be able to answer your needs to achieve top quality patient care very importantly long term value investment through high quality med tech enabled by one source of additional financing so we are today not only going to talk about acquiring the med tech we are also bringing to the webinar here a solution an innovative solution mr graf has just mentioned earlier uh, on on how we can support in terms of uh, through innovative financing solution through the german chamber of commerce as well as lbbw and we will get to that in a short while um, i would like to take the next 2 to 3 minutes to reflect a little bit of what how the pandemic has been like from you can see on the graph right here from surge to recovery hopefully no second waves but that is not the case for some of the countries that we know some has even gone on to a third or fourth wave and what means the new normal and how quickly can that be as you can see here now the surge we started off 12 months ago or 13 months ago and in indonesia specifically it was until late february or early march that we discovered our first case yeah and today hopefully we are let me just bring up my pointer we are looking at cases hovering around 10000 or slightly even more than 10000 right now we still do not know yet or at least i do not know yet if that is the peak and hopefully that would be the peak with all of the measures that are in place and hopefully that will be enough to bring down the cases but we are not sure yeah we are not sure and at the very beginning i still remember when uh, close to a year ago in march or in april that was when the fear to visit hospitals for basic healthcare needs uh was striking the patients and in some countries we know that for elective and outpatient surgery or procedures there were a, there were directives to stop which means in gov the government is telling the hospitals to stop all elective and outpatient surgery and procedures non urgent procedures they were told to stop and especially for private healthcare providers as many of you are, are here are, are from we cannot imagine or we could sense what impact that would have on your revenue on your patients on your operations it took a deep dive all the way down to the bottom and this was when cases are still surging that was back in april back in may and right now we see in the governments all around the world and in indonesia as well there is a plan to vaccinate to provide a solution to mitigate the rise of the pandemic yeah and for sure we know 
that the pandemic will go away. And with the pandemic going away, it's a matter of time, patients with chronic diseases will still need their conditions to be treated. They still need basic health care. And that is where we look at the curve over here, the orange line, where they will return to the hospitals, they will still need medical and basic health care from their doctors, from the hospitals and healthcare providers like yourself, many of you on the, on the webinar today. And with, with that return of elective procedures, we will see that there is a backlog that needs to be cleared because during the peak of the pandemic, a lot of these procedures could not be done because resources have to be shifted. The pandemic has to be tackled. And soon there is also the pressure to clear the queue. Let's not forget chronic diseases are still coming. Are still, there are still new cases, be it cardiology cases, be it cancer cases. The population still needs a solution. Basic healthcare needs for these diseases and these illnesses. And in time to come, late 2021, in 2022, or maybe even 2023, we will hopefully return back to the 2019 values for elective and outpatient surgeries and procedures. And to prepare for that, to enable all of you for that, this is where we are here. Between the search and the recovery phases of this whole episode, we want to be able to enable you and to prepare you to capture opportunities in a post-pandemic world. When the pandemic is dying down, where elective surgeries and procedures are coming back up, that's where we want to enable you to be prepared to take care of your patients. Let's not forget in Indonesia, especially in Indonesia, there is a large group of patients who are seeking overseas medical treatment in other countries, in ASEAN, particularly in ASEAN, in some other countries. Yeah? And these patients, the market is already there. The patients are already there. This is a second point that I would like to, we would like to address to you, not just because of the pandemic, but even before the pandemic, there was already a need for healthcare, for basic needs, for infrastructure that we will be more than happy to share with you in the next couple of slides. And like Dr. Susi has mentioned, after the pandemic, what does it mean in terms of investment, in terms of clinical workflow, in terms of redesign patient flows, facilities, investments on your your healthcare equipment. What would that mean and what value can we add to you? This is what we're going to talk about in the next uh, couple of slides and how eventually, how can we finance? How can we help you? How can we be a partner to you in terms of financing? With that, I have come to the uh, short end of, of this introduction the, to explain and to reflect and to more importantly, connect with all of you to look at the impact of the pandemic and also to not lose track on what is to come after the pandemic because there will still be the need for investment. There will still be great opportunities out there for healthcare providers, especially in the private segment to capture. And I'm very happy now to move on to the next segment of our webinar. And uh, that is to introduce the MedTech brands Mr. Graf, our uh, deputy head of uh, mission uh, of the German embassy has mentioned earlier uh, of the vast experience and expertise that Siemens Healthineers, Draeger and Bibron all bring to the table. And we would like to spend some time for each and every one of them today on this webinar to share with you what kind of solutions we have and what we bring, what value we bring to the table for you and for your hospitals. Um, as a summary, all three brands, when combined together, we bring 430 years of experience in high quality German medtech. Yeah. And we will want to now take the opportunity to share with you who we are individually first. And then later on, we have a story to show you how complementary we are to each other. First and foremost, we have Siemens Healthineers, and I would like to introduce Mr. Pa uh, pa Alfred Paringa, who is our country head for Siemens Healthineers Indonesia, to share with us on the portfolio of Siemens Healthineers. 
Pa Alfred, please. So, thank you, pa Jonathan. And first of all, let me try to make that work. How do I get this done? I see. Okay. First of all, good afternoon to all of you. It is my great honor and my great pleasure to speak to you, our valued customers, the valued and important healthcare providers, particularly of the private sector here in Indonesia. I give you just a very brief introduction of who we are. We, Siemens Healthineers, and the summary statement is our purpose, our purpose is to enable you, to enable you, the healthcare providers here in Indonesia, to increase value. And what does that mean? It's a simple formula. We want to enable you to deliver better outcomes at lower costs. And outcomes have many shapes and colors. There are clinical outcomes. There are operational outcomes. There are patient satisfaction outcomes. There are financial outcomes. And all of them we want to improve while lowering the cost. What drives us? products and solutions that contribute to these value promises, some to all, some to some of that, but each and every portfolio element we make is geared towards delivering on our value promises to you. I will not introduce the portfolio we have. It would be not meeting the purpose of this webinar. Just as a snapshot, we talk about four categories of solutions. The imaging solutions, starting from simple X-ray, fluoroscopy, computer tomography, MRIs, molecular imaging, PET CTs, SPECT CTs, all kinds of devices, ultrasound that generate images. Then I walk to the quadrant below. It's about innovating procedures, advanced therapies, our NGO systems, our surgery systems, radiotherapy systems. They are designed to innovate the procedures uh, the physicians are performing on the patients. Then we have a large segment of laboratory diagnostics. And this is about tests and uh, it's about uh, in vitro diagnostics. We talk about segments here, laboratory diagnostics, point of care and molecular diagnostics. And it's from small desktop analyzers all the way up to scalable and large automated laboratories with multiple thousands of tests or tubes per day. And last but not the least, we talk about the uh, all covering solutions, the digital solutions, the artificial intelligence applications, and of course, the various types of services we are offering around the entire portfolio and beyond to you, our healthcare providers. And talking about services, I want to particularly highlight uh, the aspect of value partnerships. Value partnerships are 
a portfolio element for us. We are looking at this as a very specific and uh, tailor-made design solution for you to enable you to achieve a certain goal. And they can be very different. It could be about financial planning. It could be about a new greenfield hospital and expansion or a change in your shareholding or you want to go for IPO or you want to drive performance improvements. The idea of a partnership is that we engage for the long term and together, together we agree on achieving one and the same goal. Now, it's my great pleasure to hand over to my colleague, the other company in our club here. And I welcome Patrick Siman Juntak from Draeger to introduce his company. Terima kasih, selamat sore. Thank you, Alfred. And again, very good afternoon for all of you. And thank you for making time to join this event. Again, my name is Patrick Simanjuntak. I'm the person in charge for Drager Indonesia. So just a brief introduction. Drager is a life-saving technology company who has been around for 132 years with the headquarter in Lübeck, Germany. And our mission is to protect, support, and save lives. Therefore, our customers are ranging from various segments, starting from hospital segment, which is all of you today, fire services, oil and gas industry, mining, chemical industry, as well as other markets such as pharmaceutical, food and beverage, and so forth. However, today, our focus is you in the hospital segment whereby Drager would position itself as the specialist in acute care since 1889. From this slide, you could see that we invented the world's first modern anesthesia device with apparatus for oxygen and chloroform. And since then, we keep updating our products until the ones that some of you use today at your hospital, such as Perseus A500 or our newest Atla. And also other life-saving devices such as ventilators, baby incubators, patient monitor, etc. Statistically, three out of five hospitals globally are using Drager anesthesia devices. Fundamentally, we share your goals which primarily there are four pillars. The first one, improving clinical outcomes. The second one, managing cost of care. Next is to ensure the staff, your staff satisfaction, and ultimately enhancing patient experience. And we want to support you in facing your challenges and meet your priorities. Today is very special as Drager Indonesia would like to do this together with our colleagues from Siemens and B. Brown Indonesia. As the specialist in acute care, specifically Drager provides solutions, products, services to support your therapy in three critical care areas. Namely, the first one is operating room or perioperative. 
from anesthesia workstations, patient monitor with clinical information systems, lights pendants, also gas management system, and then of course uh, we have the consumables. The next one is intensive care unit, which has become even more important since the pandemic around March last year. And of course, this will be ventilation and respiratory monitoring on top of what I mentioned before. Lastly, the neonatal care unit from open and close baby incubators, neonatal ventilation, jaundice management, including the installation, education, consultancy, as well as surface and maintenance. So in conclusion, Draeger technology focuses on improving acute care with the connected solutions for ER, OR, ICU, NICU that connect all the devices that are vital in the critical care areas, as I mentioned in the previous three slides. As mentioned earlier, we do share your goals. Your needs are our priorities. Therefore, let us focus. Thank you very much for listening. And now I will hand this over to Rainer, my colleague, who is the leader for B Brown Indonesia. Thank you. Patrick. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Rainer Rubel. I'm the managing director of B Brown here in Indonesia. A warm welcome uh, to more than 140 participants. Uh, we are quite happy and thankful that you take time uh, to share this afternoon with us on uh, these topics, which are all on our mind. Um, SP Brown mission is to protect, I have to move on here. Forget I'm so excited to be part of that <laughs> meeting that I forgot that. Um, our mission is to protect and improve the health of people around the world um, and B. Brown has strong ties, uh, business ties with Indonesia for more than 30 years. And our commitment is ongoing. And uh, one good uh, documentation for that is our local production site uh, in Karabang, one hour uh, east of uh, Jakarta. And we produce uh, infusion solution for the local Indonesian market. Now, B. Brown's product portfolio is probably one of the broadest for all medical device uh, companies worldwide with more than 100,000 uh, articles. And obviously I will not present all of them, uh, but we um, group them in 16 therapeutic areas for best uh, outcome. Some of these products are quite interesting and relevant for you to know. It's one, the Esculap instruments, equipment and implants for VOR. It's our full range offering for the hemodialysis and uh, the most advanced concepts in infusion therapy. With uh, the Esculap brand, we offer market leader technologies for sterile good and OR equipment. Whatever the needs are of your surgeons, of your OR and CSSD experts, we support you not only with products, but with consulting services and educate your team how to use the products, but also how to project, protect your investment for best value retention. Infusion therapies are the core competency for B. Brown. Focus in our product development in the development of application is safety. Safety for your team, for your staff, all the healthcare professionals, and also safety for your patients. So if you are looking for safety and if 
good clinical and good financial outcomes are relevant for you, then B. Brown is the partner you have been looking for. Now, as you already heard in, in working on the preparation for this meeting, we found out how well the complement to each other. Let's take a look at uh, your operation room. The operation room department, as we all know, is a major driver and contributor to your business, uh, not only clinically, but also financially. Siemens, Traeger, B. Brown, we complement each other in our business understanding and approach to offer value adding solution, solutions meeting your needs. But Siemens, Traeger and B. Brown also complement very nicely in our product portfolios and technologies. To learn more about the different products and technologies, as well as of all the related offerings in digitalization, in consulting, in training and education, in technical service and maintenance, you will get value proposals from each company individually, project by project, according to your needs and to your specific situation. And with that, I close the round of company presentations and I give the uh, speaker seat back to Jonathan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Alfred, Patrick, and Raina for the insightful portfolio view. I think many of us are very familiar with these brands, uh, but maybe not to 100%. Uh, I've uh, also heard coming from, from personal experience, I've also heard that um, some colleagues, healthcare providers, CEOs or users may not know that some of us, some of these, our brands are actually offering some technologies and they probably have not heard of. So um, this view is a very nice view, what you see on the screen of what we combine together to offer you and your hospital, your organizations uh, to take care of your patients. Now, now that we, now that we have talked about the technology, the medtech, the solutions, the portfolio of all three brands. We want to move on to the next segment of this webinar, and that is to talk about the financing part of the projects that you would like to expand on, you would like to upgrade on in your hospitals, in your organizations. I would like to share with everybody a survey which was conducted before the pandemic. As we all know, the pandemic has brought forth many challenges, one of them being revenue challenges, financial challenges, there is no doubt, and we understand that. But even before the pandemic, in a survey which was conducted in the US among CEOs, many of you are on the call who are C-levels, you, you, would, you would understand, what were the, we asked in that survey, what top issues confront these CEOs? And after the responses, they collated the responses you could see on the screen right now. Even before the pandemic, financial challenges, that was ranked number one on the list of challenges that top CEOs or CEOs of hospitals were facing already back then. And now that we have gone through a year or slightly more than a year of pandemic, I think it's uh, needless to say that that issue or that challenges has multiplied a few folds. And we understand um, the difficulties that you are going through. On top of that, having the need to catch up with chronic diseases, taking care of patients of chronic diseases, and also looking into the future what happens when the pandemic is over, yeah? So with that, we have come to the second part of the webinar, and that is the to look into the financing part 
of things and um, how that works out. We have a few examples. And today we are very happy to have Marcus Leichung, the Divisional Head Competence Center for German Export Finance uh, from the Singaporean German Chamber of Industry and Commerce, as well as Leonard Anilaputra Eggert, the Chief Representative of Indonesia of LBBW Bank, who will walk us through and show us a little bit of how such a innovative financing solution could look like for all of you. And with that, I will now hand over to Markus. Yes, thank you, Jonathan. And first, uh, thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you very much for the, your attendance for today's webinar. I would also like to thank uh, Siemens Hölzinger Strager B. Brown for organizing this event. It was uh, a piece of work uh, for, the, for the preparation, but it, I think it's well done. Um, and in the next 20 minutes, um, I would like to, we would like to give a short introduction uh, first of the Competence Center and Dealer Hermes, followed by Leonard providing you more details about um, LBBW and the experience, especially in the Indonesian market and also concluded by our case study to provide you with some solutions. We learned a lot today about tailor-made um, German medtech opportunities or, or products in place to provide for you high quality um, patient care systems and, and especially to enable you to increase uh, the value for your hospitals and your patient. And now we would like to talk more alongside um, how it could be financed in the end by the help of the export credit agency, Euler Hermes. And therefore we have a case study with two examples. And in the end, some context it will most likely take 20 minutes. I would like to highlight also, you should uh, raise questions all the time. If something is unclear, we would like to answer all the questions for you. And please let us start with the next slide, Leonard. Leonard. Yes, um, I'm responsible here in, I'm located in Singapore and responsible here for the Competence Center for German Export Finance. This is an institution which was implemented um, October 2019. There are at the moment three competence centers and final financial experts in the market, one in Dubai, one in Nairobi, and I myself here in Singapore. I cover the market Southeast Asia and Bangladesh with a special focus on Indonesia. The idea of the competence center is on one hand to provide especially investors uh, information about Euler Hermes, the German export credit agency, about their products, about their processes. You can reach out anytime to me here, also my contact details. I will try to help you and explain you everything in detail. But on the other hand, and also most important is that we are the local contact person, especially for you in the market. We will help you also to find solutions for your financial needs. Um, if you're interested to buy equipment out of Germany, there is a, a opportunity to involve Udo Hermes to provide a, a additional um, a guarantee on top on it. And I would like to give you a better understanding about Udo Hermes itself in the next slide, please. Uh, Udo Hermes is the German export credit agency and um, is acting on behalf of the Federal Republic of Germany over 70 years now. We are a strong partner for exporters, uh, financing banks, but also for local investors. And to strengthen the position also, the, as I mentioned in the beginning, was that the, 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 the competence centers have been founded in, in 2019. Um, Euler Hermes is providing um, risk guarantees for political and um, commercial risk almost worldwide. We are active in 154 countries and over 70% of the countries are related or businesses we do is are related to emerging and developing countries, which means we are used to, to take risk and we are especially uh, uh, an additional tool for the private risk insurance sector if, if in countries where they might not be able to provide a guarantee, we will step in and try to foster German exports and to strengthen also the, the export activities in your countries. Our total um, exposure is 88 point billion. For example, in 2019, we covered newly transactions over 21 billion. Um, the most activities we see in, in sectors like transportation, infrastructure, power, energy, but especially in 2020, there was a slightly trend more and more to healthcare um, inquiries. And we would like to figure out options to help you, especially in this also the, the goal and the aim of this webinar, to help you better understanding how you could also include Rudolf uh, Hermes or the German Export Credit Agency for your transactions. And your, and your future plans for investments or 
or certain um, activities um, financial wise. Um, what else beneficial is the we provide protection, as I mentioned, uh, for political commission and political risk over for 95% cover quota. And um, it's very beneficial because the guarantees are from the German government and they will benefit by the triple A rating of the Federal Republic of Germany. Um, since I mentioned 70 years of experience, uh, we, are, we have been a strong partner to several crises in the world. Also, the pandemic now is a harsh hit for all the economies worldwide, but we are a strong partner and our risk policy is very open to take risks, especially these times and even after the, uh, the, the actual pandemic times. Therefore, the aim was also with this webinar to reach out to you to provide you more um, explanations and maybe help you to fi find ways to future finalize your, your project plans. Yeah, that's the decide from Euro Hermes, but I would like to give you some insights also, also for Indonesia in the next slide. Uh, we are quite familiar already with the, the Indonesian market. Um, what you can see here on the left side, there are our cover volumes um, uh, for the last, or, or I mean from 2014 to 2018. We have been able to provide especially short-term related transactions, which means um, with um, repayment tenors up to two years, but also we could conclude uh, medium long-term transactions with tenors even up to 18 years for renewables. We are doing a general business and uh, we are a diversified active in the market from uh, textile, especially also healthcare, energy, transportation, um, paper and, and mining transactions. We are very diversified and we are eager to take the, the risk. Um, our country, per, or, or from the country risk perspective, our cover policy for Indonesia, there are no formal restrictions on, on our hand. We are able to provide coverage with no restrictions. Sure, we have to do our risk assessment also for your company. We would require the last, the, the late, uh, the last three annual reports to get a better understanding of your company as well. And from a country's perspective, um, um, Indonesia has a very moderate uh, country's rating of three out of seven. Um, it is quite moderate. And I would like to establish more relationships also today and after this webinar to figure out solutions for you because we I see there are huge potential in the Indonesian market and especially in the healthcare sector in the future. I would like to hand over now to, to Leonard, please. Yep, thank you very much. Uh, Markus, can you hear me clearly? Maybe you can Perfect. confirm, Markus. Okay, great. Perfect. Yeah, uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon and also Selamat sore. Papa, Ibu, dan hadirin sekalian. My name is uh, Leonard Anila Putra Egert. Uh, it's a very long name, so you can just call me Leo for short. I'm uh, half Indonesian, half German, Stunga Bogor, Stunga German, but I hope it's okay if I don't present in Vasa Sunda today. Um, so, as mentioned by, by Jonathan, I'm the chief representative of a German bank uh, LBBW here in Indonesia. We are a state-owned bank and the largest state-owned bank in Germany, actually. So we've heard from uh, Siemens, uh, Dräger, and B. Brown earlier that they combined uh, have 430 years of experience. So we can add another 200 years to that. Uh, so we've been exist in existence for, for quite a while. And here in Indonesia, we opened our office uh, 2019 after we received the license from the OJK. It's a pleasure for me to speak to you today uh, as private uh, healthcare providers, as hospital owners and operators, and we would be happy to support you as a long-term partner. I'm confident that we can be a good partner to you due to three reasons. One, we are familiar with Indonesia. So, so far we have already accompanied, financed 16 transactions or projects. So far, our clients include PLN as one of the uh, BOMN, uh, also the Kementerian Kuangan and several private companies. Second, we are familiar with the healthcare sector. One of our projects that we have financed here is with the RSPAD Gatuz Broto under the Kementerian Pertahanan. And thirdly, we also are familiar with export finance. And this is what we specialize in. We are the market leader for Euler Hermes financings. And just last year, we also received the award as the best bank for export finance. And um, I leave it with that for the introduction and hand back to you, Marcus.
Markus, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I was still muted. Okay. Now it's thank you, Leonard, for for your introduction of BW and your activities in Indonesia. And now it's time to step into our case study. Maybe you can start with the next slide. Um, we, as I mentioned in the beginning, we learned today how important it is also for the for Traeger B. Brown and Siemens Helsinius to work together, contribute contribute to each other, how it can be very value adding for you. Now it comes alongside maybe with a financing solution, uh, as I mentioned, including uh, Euler Hermes as an export credit agency. Uh, we figure out two base cases here, option A and option B. Please be aware, um, we only choose two products at the moment for the moment, uh, with, which are the most common and most reliable products so from, from Euler Hermes, but there are several products in place who might be also, could be of interest of you, but today just focusing on these two options. For option A, uh, we decided for, for transactions with a contract value, a contributed contract value of the three exporters, Siemens, Sales, and Brown and Traeger, uh, below 5 million, where, you know, where the Euro Hermes instrument and the supplier credit cover would be the instrument of choice, which means in the end that the suppliers would provide you with a corporate loan and the Euro Hermes um, supplier credit cover would then Come into force and uh, would come into place to provide the exporters with the benefit of the guarantee, and then uh, from a repayment perspective, if you are staying below uh, contract value below five million, it would be five years of repayment tenor plus the delivery time. For option B, uh, we have chosen uh, contract values above five million. Uh, to be frank, uh, from your Hermes perspective, there is no end. Um, we we concluded even a project in Vietnam. We provided financing there for 900 million, but for a normal case that it, uh, in your case, that 20, 30 million would be fine for us as well, or 50, uh, that's not, not a problem. Also here, the, the suppliers would team up together um, and the instrument of choice would be the buyer's credit where, um, for example, LBBW would provide a financing loan to you and we would take over the risk per perspective out of it. And then we had a tenor, and which is quite interesting, above six years. It starts at, by, by 5 million with six years, but if we maybe are able to, if I heard in the audience, there are so called investors or uh, company owners of maybe several hospitals, that could be, might be of interest to bundle certain projects into one finance bias credit structure where you even reach the uh, contract value amount of even more than 5 million or if it's so to say after up to 15 millions because after up to 15 millions, we would be able to even take risks um, with a repayment tenor up to ten, uh, up to ten years, but it's depending still on the contract value. And um, maybe we go now deep into financing option A, the supplier credit cover. This is a very basic cover. Um, I will explain it to you now. If you have questions, you could debate until the Q and A, or you can raise it now. Um, uh, the, the supplier credit cover is uh, is very important for you because it would be enable you to receive all the high value products from the German exporters. You would enter into a commercial contracts with Siemens, Halsey, ESB, Braun, and Traeger. Um, and BB Braun and Traeger and Siemens, Halsey, they would go back to Euro Hermes here on the left uh, on the right hand side, um, with, with the mentioned with the Eagle. They would try to. Um, approve the project, they would check the, the, do a risk assessment for the project, they would analyze the latest three annual reports, get a better understanding about your hospital project in place, and then they would might be able to provide you with a guarantee. We have chosen today uh, uh, an example for a contract value for 3 million to make it easy. There is a still for you uh, in point one. There is a contribution on your side as well. There is still a requirement for down payment up to 15%. This is part of the of an international regulation where all export credit agencies have to follow. It's the OCD consensus. And this requires at least a 15% um, participation on, on your end side, we, which means in the end, um, the, the guarantee would cover 85% um, of the contract value. In our example, it would be 2.1 million plus the ECA costs, which could be then in, included in the corporate loan structure from B Siemens, B Brown and Traeger. Um, if we are, if Euro Hermes approves the project and the down payment has been made to the exporters, the guarantee will be in full force and defect. And then the, the exporters would be able to provide you with the CapEx deliveries. This is here mentioned in 3.1. 
and provide you with a corporate loan structure. In our case, in this example, it would be five years. After the completion of the project, means the, the delivery and maybe the installation has been completed, and then the, the repayment um, period will be then start after six months, and it will be in general, it would, would be most likely uh, six months equal installments. And all these, uh, the risk out of the interest and repayment would be then covered by the guarantee. And this is very important, based on the guarantee from Euler Hermes and from the gov government of, uh, of Germany, this would only enables the Siemens B. Brown and Traeger to provide you with such a long-term financing option. You might now ask, what are the price, uh, the costs out of it? We will come to this uh, point at the end after Leon has presented you in brief the structure of the, so of the bias credit structure. Please keep in mind, this was very simple, uh, explained from my side. I would be pleased if you reach out to us later or during the Q&A session to provide you more details on it. You know, please. Yeah, thank you, Markus. Um, I understand this might be new for you, so I want to spend some time here to explain the structure to, to you, but also as Markus mentioned, uh, feel free to raise your question either here today in the Q&A session or also afterwards the webinar, we would be happy to talk to you about your plans and, and how we can help you. So the main difference in this structure, which is called the BIOS credit structure, is that we are involved as LBBW, as the bank. So the previous one was the supplier's credit structure. This one is the BIOS credit structure and you are in the focus. So the same concept applies that there needs to be a commercial contract be between you and the exporter or exporters. Um, and as a second step, we could then set up a loan agreement with you. And the 15% down payment still need to come from you, but the remaining 85% we can then pay on your behalf. And afterwards, the repayment would flow from you to us. Now, the interesting or attractive part about this structure is, is this part here below, um, where the export credit, uh, credit agency and Eula Hermes come in because they provide an insurance to us. So in the worst case or in a the theoretical case that you cannot repay us, you would default on a loan. We can still claim back our money from Eula Hermes as the export credit agency for us. This makes it very secure, and this is why it provides several benefits to you, which we will discuss in the next slides. So you might ask yourself, why should you consider uh, LBBW? Why should you consider these structures? Why not just lend, uh, borrow money from the local banks, BNE, BRE, Mandiri, um, price, is actually one of the most interesting benefits you can achieve out of this. So what we've tried to show you here is a very simple comparison of a local bank loan and the two structures that we have just um, described, Marcus and I. So now all these numbers are just estimations, indications, but let's assume uh, for a local bank loan, um, for around three to five million uh, equivalent in rupia, you would pay around eight to 12%. Um, so let's then maybe look at the second column here because in order for you to be able to compare it, you will also need to factor in that insurance premium. So uh, as Marcus said, we're talking about five years of, of repayment and over for the whole loan, you would need to pay 39 seven percent around four percent this is a one-time payment so if you actually want to look at it on a yearly basis you divide the close to four percent by five and you end, end up at around uh, 0 0.79 0 0.8 percent so what's what's crucial here is that if you combine this premium with the interest margin that is being charged on a combined basis you're still at a much more competitive level compared to your elf, uh, 8 to 12 percent over here. And the same approach applies to the buyer's credit, where you can even um, have access to longer tenors, um, even lower rates, 
And as, as Marcus mentioned, this is just the sample calculation for a 5 million um, a euro contract. But um, and please bear in mind that the bigger your project gets, the more, yeah, the cheaper, the more competitive this gets. So I've, I've said um, this has several benefits. So we've tried to summarize these here for you. So on, on top, you would see the financing costs, the interest that we just talked about. Um, because to us, this is a financing um, with German credit risk. So um, as I mentioned earlier, if you were default, we, we can still claim back our money. But the second a very big um, benefit that a lot of our customers actually find important is the repayment period. So for your local financings, you would often only get up to five years. Here you have access up to 10 years depending on the, on the contract value as mentioned earlier. The third very big benefit is collateral or actually no collateral because because of the insurance cover, there is, it is already secure enough for us. So we would normally not ask for a pledge on the equipment that you're buying. And um, this also differentiates us from the local financings. Then the next point, is what this webinar is actually all about. It's about providing you with one solution, one German solution. It's German technology plus German financing. And what this also means to you is that you, if you have your credits from your local banks, you actually don't tap into those. So you can diversify your funding sources. You get credit on top um, from us as, as an offshore lender. And as the last point, this is also freedom for you. This means you have the freedom of choice between fixed rates, floating rates. We can quote you both. You can also choose between currencies, between euros and, and US dollars. So um, as you see, this is a very customized financing and we are very happy to talk to you about uh, your detail projects. So um, with this, I... I end it here. I leave it at our contact details page. Again, I would like to invite you to, to reach out to us, to ask us questions. I know this can be maybe overwhelming with the amount of details that we've given to you today, but um, I thank you for your attention and uh, very happy to hear from you. With this, back to you, uh, Jonathan. Thank you very much, Marcus and Leonard, for that insightful presentation on the financing solution on the medtech that uh, all of us would may be interested in in investing to prepare um, for the future after the pandemic and with that we have also come to the end of our presentation um, I will leave you with our contact additional contact details from um, the three brands that is myself from Siemens Telpenius, Ibu Friska, from Draga Indonesia and Pak Erfan from B Brown Indonesia. In case if any of the audience you have interest in the med tech, in any of the med tech that we provide or solutions that we provide, or if you have questions uh, regarding the financing structure, what Marcus and Leonard has talked about earlier on, and you would like to find out more in terms of a tailored solution, feel free to reach out to anyone that you see here on screen and we will be happy to take your inquiry and also discuss with you what a partnership would look like, what a collaboration could look like. And I just want to mention that every collaboration, uh, every, every future potential collaboration and partnership, they all are different. That is highly tailored and customized to your organization needs, to your company needs. So feel free to reach, reach out to any one of us. And with that, I will hand it over back to Dr. Grace. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jonathan and all the panelists. It's very great discussion on financing. And jadi ini mungkin kalau Bapak Ibu Dokter tertarik, Uh, jadi uh, Simon Drager and B Brown menawarkan kerjasama uh, dengan uh, Bank German untuk bisa melakukan kolaborasi. Uh, there's a question, Pak Jonathan. Actually, there's a question from my email address, and then here we have uh, Siti Rusmiati. Uh, the question is, apakah LBBW bekerja sama dengan Bank Syariah dalam pemberian kreditnya? So 
is there any cooperation between LBBW with Sherry E. Bank uh, for giving the credits? Yeah, so for that question, I will hand it to Park Leo, who will answer the question. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the question. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Grace, and, and thank you for the question. Um, so even though there is no official cooperation agreement we have in place with, with this bank, but um, we are actually very open to collaborate because at the end, uh, you might have seen we are able to provide 85% financing of the equipment that you're buying. But usually the projects that uh, the hospital owners are planning uh, might require more than that. So with this, um, we would be happy to be one of the financing sources for uh, you as uh, the healthcare providers. So open to collaborate. I hope that answers the question. The question. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a second question. Uh, there's someone who raising their hand. Uh, Dr. Shahriyal, are you with us now? Dr. Shahriyal Bahri, SPB, uh, mengangkat tangan. Uh, saya sudah membuka mic-nya. Apakah masih join bersama kami? Oke. Okay. Uh, untuk yang ke... Dua, Bapak Saiful Bahri, apakah masih join bersama? Oke, mungkin belum uh, dapat bertanya. Uh, ini ada ada pertanyaan lagi, so there's a question. Uh, what if a private hospital or any hospital uh, want you guys to explain all of this to the hospital? So you need to do the this kind of presentation uh, to each hospital. So there's a lot of question to me that uh, what if my hospital want you guys to explain uh, this team uh, to the C level to their hospital? No, I'm, 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 I'm very, very, or oh, we are very open to do that because um, also uh, today's webinar was just a teaser and uh, I know it's very general. So we would love to actually meet with the hospitals on a one-on-one -on -one basis and really mm -hmm. customize it to them. So of course, uh, we would be very available to, to do so. Okay. Uh, maybe there's a question again from, from, from Miles Baker. So I will uh, read it. To all the medical equipment companies, what step can be taken to bring the price of your equipment in Indonesia more in line with that of Singapore and Malaysia? So Jonathan, <laughs> sorry, uh, Dr. Grace, if you don't mind, uh, can you help me to repeat the question again? Okay, so actually you can read it in the Q and A section. So there's for Miles Baker to all the medical equipment companies. What step can be taken to bring the price of your equipment in Indonesia more in line with that of Singapore and Malaysia? Okay, so um, that is that is I think on a case by case basis. Um, we would need to have a, a further in-depth discussion like there was the previous request. I think uh, we would need to consult with uh, um, uh, Mr. Baker yeah, on what the exact needs are. Yeah? And then, I mean, let's, let's look at the market. Let's look at how, what we can do together to, look, to answer to your needs. But it's, it's really highly customized, and I would say that it requires a, a, a deeper level of understanding what is really required at, at the hospital or at your group or your, at your chain. So I'm um, happy to take that offline maybe with, with you, Mr. Baker, and, and we'll be in touch to look at your needs. Okay. Uh, there's one question that from private hospital through my emails. Uh, Jonathan, if they want this slide, can we give the hospital uh, this slide to to them? Uh, so yes. They can, yes. Yeah. Doctor Grace, yes, this can be shared. This uh, will be will be shared with um with all of you participants and um to I think answer also maybe earlier in terms of the request to present at your hospitals or at your companies at your organizations um it would be helpful if we can I hope you can still see my screen uh for you to uh fill in this survey we have prepared a very short feedback survey 
which should take about 10 minutes of your time. Uh, we would appreciate your support to give us your honest feedback on uh, what you think of the webinar. And in that survey, there are also questions that ask you what you would be interested to hear more about. For example, if you would like to hear about the MedTech solutions, or you would like to hear more about the financing solutions, or it's a combination. Go to that uh, survey, fill it up with your details as well, and then we will be in touch with you as soon as possible. So it's a very short link and a, quite an easy one, I would say, bit.ly slash German dash MedTech 2021 to fill up the survey and we will be in touch with you, all of you shortly. But Dr. Grace, uh, I think we, we can definitely release this slide, uh, this set of slides to all of the audience um, after this webinar. Okay, uh, so I think we've come to the end of the webinar, uh, Jonathan. Uh, this feedback sur survey will be emailed to all the participants so they can uh, fill it after this. Uh, untuk para bapak ibu dokter, bila ada uh, pertanyaan nanti bisa kita jawab secara atau bisa email kepada PD Persi, Pusat Data Persi. Uh, kemudian nanti kalau misalnya ingin mengetahui lebih lanjut terkait webinar Metek ini dan bagaimana uh, cara bekerja sama atau kolaborasinya selain menghubungi nomor kontak tadi yang sudah diberikan oleh panelis. Bisa juga menghubungi tim kami, uh, seperti biasa, uh, ada nomor uh, telepon yang bisa kalian uh, bisa Bapak Ibu dapatkan melalui website ataupun sosial media kita. Uh, uh, dalam webinar ini memang ini adalah hal baru karena uh, menggabungkan antara perusahaan-perusahaan kesehatan dengan financing atau uh, bank. Mungkin uh, apa? Hal baru untuk versi dan arsi, tetapi ini kita saling belajar. Dan kalau misalnya ada ketertarikan untuk lebih mendalami, tentu saja kita sangat terbuka untuk mempelajarinya bersama. Dan nanti bisa kontak kepada kita. Kalau misalnya ingin lebih mendalam in detail lagi, kita bisa menghubungi Jonathan atau uh, the team untuk uh, bisa mempresentkan lebih uh, dalam lagi. Mungkin begitu, Jonathan? Ya. Yeah. So, can you understand what I'm saying? Uh, well, I, I, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, but we will be happy to take more questions after after this. Like you mentioned, we we will release. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Grace. Uh, Percy will release this email uh, to the target audience together with the survey link. And then once we get the survey link with the questions, uh, we will get in touch for a more tailored engagement with uh, yeah. all all of all of the different private uh, hospital groups and management. Uh, apologize to interrupt uh, Mr. Jonathan and Dr. Grace. I think yeah. there is uh, one question still hanging in the uh, Q&A. So I think we still can uh, answer uh, one last question from Mr. Hans. Thank oh, okay. you. Okay, I will read Mr. Hans' uh, question. The exchange rate to euro is not predictable. Please advise to the solution. Maybe this is to Marcus and Tip. Yes, I think mm -hmm. Pak Leo or Pak Marcus. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you very much for that question, uh, Mr. Fuchs. Uh, uh, maybe since we've also uh, come to the end, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take this one offline, but also here uh, there are solutions that are available in the market. And I think this comes back to the question earlier, where we are collaborating with some of the Indonesian mm -hmm. banks to even provide hedging solutions if that's required. So, um, but since you mentioned Euro, I think uh, there we also have the freedom to go for US dollar, which I think is more under control. And the Bank Indonesia has a very strict um, um, yeah, watch on that exchange rate to keep it to 14,000 currently. Uh, but if you need more details, um, please, please do drop me an email and I'm happy to discuss. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Green. Yeah. Okay, I think we already answer all question. Uh, nanti jika ada yang masih mengganjal atau ingin ditanyakan, kami sangat terbuka untuk uh, memberikan jawaban atau pendapat dan menghubungkan Bapak Ibu Dokter, uh, Direktur Rumah Sakit kepada tim atau panelis yang memberikan uh, paparan pada sore hari ini. Kalau sudah tidak ada lagi, uh, Jonathan, you want to add something or Pak Alfred? 
Yes, maybe uh, Park Alfred on behalf of the um, MedTech brands and mm -hmm. uh, the German Chamber of Commerce as well as LBBW. Yeah. And Pak Kun say sorry because he has to go to another meeting with uh, Minister of Health. So he said thank you to all uh, Simon Dreger and B. Brown and uh, LBBW for uh, the corporation. Thank you. Monggo Pak Alex, silahkan. Terima kasih, Dr. Silia. Um, ya, saya cuma mau bilang terima kasih banyak atas perhatian audiensi di sini dan seperti Dr. Kuncoro bilang pada awalnya itu cuma pemulihan ya pemulihan webinar adalah pemulihan dan kita siap selalu untuk mendapat dihubungi dengan langsung uh, secara webinar ini ada daftar dengan kontak kita dan juga ada um, feedback survey ini ya kami siap selalu dan menunggu dihubungi oleh audiensi sini terima kasih banyak ya. terima kasih terima kasih Pak Alex uh, dengan tadi Pak Alex uh, memberikan kata penutup uh, saya tutup webinar pada sore hari ini terima kasih kepada Bapak Ibu uh, Direktur Rumah Sakit di seluruh Indonesia atas kesempatan dan waktunya sudah mau bergabung bersama kami. Tentu saja kami tidak uh, selesai sampai di sini, tetapi ini adalah webinar permulaan. Dan bila ada uh, rumah sakit Bapak-Ibu yang ingin mengetahui lebih detail, dapat menghubungi kami atau dapat menghubungi tim Jonathan yang tadi sudah ada di dalam slide. Slide ini akan kami bagikan kepada Bapak-Ibu dokter sekalian beserta feedback survey Uh, sehingga nanti Bapak Ibu dapat memperoleh informasi yang lebih mendetil di dalam uh, slide saat ini. Untuk itu terima kasih, mohon maaf bila ada salah. Thank you for all panelists, Jonathan, Marcus, Leonard, uh, Pak Alfred uh, from Dragers and B Brown and dan Evan. Uh, kami undur diri. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sehat untuk kita semua. Terima kasih. Terima kasih banyak Dr. Grace, Dr. Kuntoro. Uh, Mr. Graf and also Dr. Susi and all uh, team members of uh, the organizing team, Percy, RC, and of course, thank you very, very much to all of the uh, audiences who have joined us in the last one and a half hours. Terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih. Selamat sore. Selamat sore.